This is Algebra 2 with Trig. We're using technology with polynomials. We've actually learned most all of this while we were learning about quadratics. What we're going to be talking about is how the graphing calculator can do some of these calculations, but I'm also going to demonstrate Desmos with this particular one. Okay, so we have our equation. If we're going to do Desmos, you're going to type in your equation, which is x to the fourth power. You got an arrow over to get off of it, plus 3x to the third power. I'm typing in the equation that's in our notes. Minus x squared minus 4x minus 5. So there, while we were typing it, you could see all the movement going on in the graph. Notice that it has gray dots that are in here. These are all the critical points. I can push my button and slide the graph up. I lost my dots, so I need to click on the graph again to get my dots back. Okay, so if you look, there's a dot down here, there, even one in the middle here. So these are all called critical points. This is called a local uh, minimum. So we're going to look for this value, the local minimum. We'll often consider it a coordinate. There's your local maximum. This happens to be your y-intercept. Here's your local minimum again. And then, of course, your two x-intercepts, your two zeros of the function. So Desmos makes it real easy to find those. That's kind of nice. That's the advantage of Desmos. If we're using a graphing calculator, you might want to say second plus 712, so we don't have any additional errors happening. You would want to type in your equation, x to the fourth plus 3x to the third minus x squared minus 4x minus 5. And we graph that. And you see the same graph that we just had in Desmos. The difference is we don't have the points highlighted on it. We got to get those all individually. It takes a little bit longer, but no big deal. We can do it. Second, using the trace button, we want to get the calc, so we have to hit second first because it's the blue. So second calc takes us here. If we're looking for this local minimum, see the lowest point here, we're going to go to minimum and hit enter. It asks us a few questions. Now, perhaps you don't like that the graph is in the way of the words or the words are in the way of the graph. We could change that. You can go to window if you wish and change your y minimum to maybe negative 20. Give yourself plenty of room. Then you won't have those numbers in the way. Second trace. No, nope, second trace. Minimum. We take this little cursor. Some people call it a spider. So we take the spider to the left bound, to the left of the answer we're looking for, and hit enter. Take the little spider using the keys to the right bound. How far to the right do you care to look? I just need to be past my answer. I know my answer's down here somewhere. And then it says guess. It only says guess in case you have two possible answers within that same range. Domain, really. So there's my answer. That's my lowest point. And we round to the nearest thousand.
Okay, so our local minimum is negative 2.277, comma, negative 9.612. A lot of times we're probably talking about a y value, just the y value, but we're also talking about a location. So now we have to do the local maximum, because that's our next one. You can go to that one next if you wish. So second trace to maximum. Take your spider to the left of it. Take your spider to the right of it, anywhere to the right of it. You can see my arrows up here. Your fancy graphing calculator might provide two vertical lines down, which is just fine. And there is my local maximum. It's the most maximum for any point that's around it. That's why they call it local maximum. And we round that to the nearest thousands. So that's going to round because that's a 5. That'll make the 9 a 10, which moves the 4 up to a 5. That's my local maximum. Now I have another one to find, a local minimum. Second trace, minimum, left bound, enter, right bound. Be sure I'm to the right of it, enter. I've narrowed my window down, it's really the domain. And I'm only looking for answers in between those two, which is here it is. 0.676 and negative 7.025. And then our last, we're looking for x-intercepts. How do I figure out where we cross the x-axis at? Some, some people might consider doing a zero, and then you can look for intersection. But the cool part is you can just do second calc and do the zero. That is your x-intercept. So you need to be left of that x-intercept, so you got to move your little spider to the left. All right, if you notice, the x's kept changing. Negative 3.1 is smaller than negative 2.9, so I'm more to the left of my x value that's here. Enter. I'm more to the right than my 0x value. Guess what value's in between there. You just have to hit enter, and there it is. Negative 3.074, comma 0. And you do it one last time. Zero, move spider, doesn't matter where you stop. Any of these would be fine. I get pretty close, enter, enter, guess again. And we get 1.422 and zero. Those are your values. You got a local minimum. You got a local maximum. And you have two different zeros. Now here comes the newest question for this whole section. Here we have a cardboard, it's a sheet of cardboard that's 12 inches by 15 inches. What we're going to do is cut out the corners and when we fold this we're going to make a box out of it. So it's going to look like this. It's 15 inches across, 12 inches across and we're cut uh, squares out in the corner. 
So it's x by x. What we're going to do is fold up those sides. What happens when we fold up the sides? It was 15 inches long. Now I'm going to fold up the sides. It, is this box shorter than 15 now? Or is it longer than 15? It is definitely shorter. So when we talk about an equation, that is one of the dimensions of our box. It's 15, not counting the two X's. It's 12, not counting the two X's. It's smaller by the amount of X, twice. Then that's going to give us this box. So when we talk about volume, we think about that as length times width times height. So my volume is going to have a distance the long way, 15, not counting two X's. Fold those X's up, makes that amount shorter. So 15 minus two X's and 12 minus two X's. How tall is it? What is the height of the box? At height of that box is clearly X. So we typically put the monomials first. So in our case, it's kind of like height, width, and length. Order doesn't matter in multiplication. So there we have it. There's our equation. We can use that either with Desmos or the calculator. Let's go over to Desmos real quick. Use that again. You can do this in your calculator. X times 15 minus 2X and 12 minus 2X by just narrowing in on your mouse or using the negative here you're zooming out or if you want to change what oh you can't see all that this is horrible all right my bad sorry no one told me so I'm just narrowing in and I'm getting the change I need to come all the way to the top there if I click on the graph that's going to give me a point, and that's the point I need. Okay, a couple different ways you can control your window. You could come over here and control the window and tell it where you need to look. We would typically look on a graphing calculator in the table to estimate our heights and stuff. So you can just use your eyes, whatnot. Anyway, it is at 2.2097177234 So we have a local max. You could try that with your graphing calculator also. You should 2.209 and 177234 rounding to the Okay, they said hundredths. So that means tenths, hundredths. We would put that at 2, 1, and 177.23. So what should our cuts be? Our cut should be 2.21 inches. That's our X value that maximized our volume. What is the maximum volume? 177.23 inches cubed, cubic inches. Volume is length times width times height, three dimensions. What would the dimensions be? Well, we had our length, and it doesn't matter which one you call your length. Okay, maybe that was the 12 minus 2 times x. And the width, maybe that was the 15 minus 2 times. And then, of course, the height was the 2.21. Those were inches. So 
So 12 minus 2 times 2.21 and 15 minus 2 times 2.21. Those are my dimensions. 7.58 and 10.58. And those would be inches. I could take those and say 7.58 times 10.58 times 2.21 times 2.21 and I would get that 177.234 same answers round it to the nearest hundredth we just put it 0.23 so that was using Desmos to do it. You can also get those values on your graphing calculator. On the flip side, we've done this type of question with our quadratics that we learned earlier. When given a set of points, we use a quadratic regression feature in her calculator to find a model that fits the points. But what if the data that suggested does not fit a quadratic model? What if we know the type of higher ordered polynomial? This is very helpful if you know what it should be. The graphing calculator can perform cubic and quartic regression. Now, Desmos can do it also, but it's a bit more tricky. There's a new process that uh, uh, Desmos can do regression of linear and quadratic really easily. But for cubic, it takes a whole formula you got to learn to type in there. I can help you know how to do that if you're determined to use Desmos. We'll use our graphing calculator for this. It's kind of the easier method for it. So we know that we are looking for a cubic model. That's helpful. We don't have to decide what model to use. It's telling us. So the table shows the average price in thousands of dollars of a house in northeast United States from this time frame. 1970, 1987 to 1995. Find a cubic model. Let X represent the years since. This is the big trick. Since. So that means in 87, you're zero years since 87. And then you're one years, two years, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight years since 1987. So we come to our calculator. We hit the stats button. You've done this before. Hit the stats button. Click on edit. Type in your X's. Zero, one. I'll get it right here in a second. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then you need to type in all those crazy Y values, 140, 49, 159.6, don't round it, 159, 59, 169, 162.9, 169, and 180. So now we've got all these points into our calculator. Those points being plotted out are going to kind of curve along on the x-axis, or on the xy-axis. We want to know the equation that would best hit every one of those points. So if we hit stat, go over to calc, we can go down to cubic regression. 
So it's going to do the calculating for us. Now your calculator, it might give a lot more information. And you just need to arrow down to the word calculate. I'm just going to hit enter. And there's all my values. Here's my equation. It's a cubic. The B value goes with the X squared. The C value goes with the X. And then your constant. So we've got Y equals 0.24. Let's see, what are we rounding to? Nearest thousandths. So 0.242 X cubed minus 2.99 tenths, hundredths, thousandths, x squared, plus 13.454, that's x, and then our constant number is 139.767. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So there's our equation. It's a bit more complicated to use Desmos with cubics. Now, here's the tough part. Assuming the model continues in this pattern, predict the average price of a house in the year 2000. Well, what's 2000 going to be? This is 1995. So I'm going to have 1996, 97, 98, 99, and the year 2000. So that's going to be when X is 9, X is 10, X is 11, X is 12, X is 13. So you could come over here and type 13 into your equation. 4x. And you could figure out that value. Now there's also another neat operation on your calculator. I'll show you real quick. Mine, for some reason, doesn't work well. I'm not quite sure why. But if I go to VARS, down to number five, which is statistics, and over to equation, I hit enter. I don't get the right value. This is all messed up in here. I don't understand what's going on. Even if I do that in Y equals, I get the same result. It's not the equation we just did. It gets all mumble jumbled. So if I use a different calculator, so if someone would let me use their calculator, so if I bring in another calculator here, that'll let you read those numbers. I don't know if you can. There they are. Okay, there's my cubic regression. So if I hit the VARS button right next to clear, Go down to number five, which is statistics. Oh, I did make a mistake. Sorry. We're going to go to y equals first. Hit y equals. We want this equation to be typed into this location. So now we go to vars, number five, over to equation. And that's going to put that equation into... That, and there's the 139. That's what my calculator never showed us. It just ran into each other. So now we can go to table, and we can look at what is our value at 13. We get 339,000. You just move the decimal spot three to the right, and that turns this into thousands. There we have it. You would get very close to that if you type this into your calculator. It may not be exact because the calculator used more accurate values.